I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Okay, I'm back in the basement, going to mess around with some Electra. I think we left off not resolving the two bottom left flippers. I mean, the bottom left and the upper left flippers not working. I think that's where we're at. And I think I got some ideas on what to do. But just a brief update on what's going on in the rest of the collection. Mystic is fine. Still dealing with Xenon soundboard issues, so I sent out two different soundboard sets to Brent today. And we'll see what happens when I get those boards back. So, also, tag team. I sent out the CPU as well. Um, on Tuesday of every October, I get $20 worth of free shipping for every Tuesday for being part of the Canada Post Snap Ship program. And you could too if you sign up. So I utilized my free $20 shipping and sent a bunch of boards to Brent. So it's a pretty good deal. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just got a little bit of sketchy behavior. So soundboard, I mean, the CPU board is now gone to Brent and he's going to replace the little daughter board on all those system 80 CPUs. There's like a little mini daughter board with another chip on it. I actually believe he redesigned and builds his own new ones and installs them custom friggin action there. So he's going to hook me up with that, change the memory capacitor for an actual CR2032 battery or whatever it is. So that's what's going on with the tag team. And I also sent out the Electra soundboard. It was working, but it, I just want Brent to look at it, change out the pots and do whatever else he does whatever he sees fit, um, since I'm sending boards anyway, let him try and bulletproof the soundboard. And I sent him the original CPU for Electra so that I can keep my Alltech board if he can shop up the original, which is in pretty good shape all in all. So I think he should be able to do that. And Actually, we played Pinball Magic. Did we play Pinball Magic? I think we played at least one game on the weekend. And it didn't reset on me, so that's good. Uh, every once in a while it likes to reset. But it's currently working, so that's good. And the other thing is, if you watched the last video, I think I was talking about the mist not working. And it was either the Optos or the little opto board so I bought a new opto board that's made by home pin this is the original one so I stuck in the home pin opto board and boom the mist is back up and running so Dracula's happy again so that's good news so if we take a closer look at this opto board when I first got it this component here is uh, called an inductor and its top literally popped off and like a slinky like copper structure was popping out of it kind of like a jack-in-the-box so it was shot ordered an inductor and look I didn't do a very good job clipping off the excess legs there did I huh but you can also see I didn't notice this or realize this until recently, or maybe I did notice and forgot, but this chip has been changed. Looks like there's three of those chips. What are they? Wow. The focus is like my current vision. It's getting a little blurry up close. Whatever those are, there might be three of them. I'm assuming they're all the same. So this one was socketed. I don't know how good of a job that was, but I mean, this board worked for years. When I pushed on this chip, it kind of went in a little bit. I've also read that changing a couple capacitors, maybe these two guys. Oh, shout out Henry. I know you're having uh, some issues with your mist now. And I think 
Henry said he's going to change out these capacitors. And I think there might be one more, maybe. This here. That says C6, doesn't it? So, is that a capacitor? It doesn't really look like it, but maybe it is. Anyway, it's a pretty simple board. Maybe I can fix it. Um, I'm not going to throw it out, obviously, so... It worked for a good while, and now it's just kaput for some reason. Uh, so yeah, Henry, let me know what happens with yours, if you get yours up and running. So that's kind of what's going on in the rest of the collection. Now I can get back to figuring out why this doesn't work, and this doesn't work. Oh, I guess... Uh, I'm going to share this other discovery with you, reluctantly, because it's not a good one. On the weekend, we were playing just a little bit of Electra with, you know, no upper flippers, no big deal, at least the bottom. Oh, here's one of Jamie's socks. Put that in the... There we go. Doing some laundry right now. Um, okay, this is what we discovered. All right, so check this out. Let me zoom in here. It's pretty level, right? On a previous video, when I did a bit of gameplay, I think that was not the last one, but the one before, I was like, oh, there's some weird spin on the ball. Due to it, you know, maybe the plexiglass surface. Well, and then I thought, oh, maybe it's just unlevel. But it was neither. Check this out. That ain't right. <laughs> and check this out. That also ain't right. So, my plexiglass is bowed in the middle. It is actually like that a little bit. So, uh, can I get a ball? relatively easily. Let me get a magnet. One moment. Okay, so let's see if this can be demonstrated. Oops. Yeah, see that? That is not good. So, what I'm going to do, I'm hoping this is going to be uh, a part solution, maybe a full solution. You can remove all the plastics and I am going to um, loosen all these posts, all the star posts. Because I like, you know, when I shop up a machine I crank them down pretty tight. Maybe I crank them down a little too tight. So if I kind of turn all these off like a 32nd of an inch on both sides. Maybe that will relieve some of the bow. I don't know. That's my thought, because why else would it bow up like that? Like, it's not like this lower play field generates so much damn heat. I mean, I guess it could. There are like two, four, six, eight, ten. It's pretty much 20 bulbs in there plus GI so I guess in theory this could generate some heat and could bow it but I'm not convinced that that is the reason it's either the heat or being tight down too much on either side so I'm gonna have to mess with that because that just ain't gonna cut it oh you can't even see that there we go. So, I got my work code out for me. I shall report back. All right, so I spent some time removing the plastics and just ever so slightly loosening up the posts, made sure none were cranked down too hard. And check this out. Made no difference whatsoever. So, it's a little bit poopy. Uh, Kind of a lot poopy, but you know, 
I guess there is an option. There is uh, one of these plexis I saw on eBay, literally only one that is available. So if I wanted to, I could actually purchase that and pop that on, which huh, it's probably not that difficult to do really. I'd have to just remove all the ramps and the plastics and the posts. I guess I'd have to remove the flippers and the lane guides. And uh, maybe the slingshots. No, the slingshot heads are fine. Well, I'd have to remove these switches. So actually, uh, you know, it'll be a little bit of work, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to play it as it lies. In the meanwhile, I'm going to try and get everything else working. Oh, I meant to show you this mini display here in display test does not really light up. I mean, it does occasionally. You can see it glitching every once in a while. There. So I'm going to fix that, reflow the headers, maybe replace it if needed, swap a couple displays if I want to try and rule out what is actually the issue. I feel like I'm procrastinating dealing with the flippers, but that's okay. It all needs to be done. I should bring the back glass down possibly too at some point, but I'm not really done going in and out of the head yet, so I guess it would be kind of pointless. So I will work on this display and then eventually get around to the flippers. Okay, I removed the display and this is a unique one where you can't actually just slip the display out like the other ones. Well, actually you would normally push the display forward to remove it, right? You just push on this and remove it from the front. But you cannot do that for this display. So you actually have to remove these four screws, pull it off like so. Take a look at it here. Stern, eh? Interesting. This is not a stern pinball machine, so someone replaced this for some reason. And this one itself is also flaky, so why is that? Looks like the wires just come straight from this connector, carry through to make this connection. So let's take a look in display test at what this thing actually looks like because we can only see the two middle digits. Oh, look. Well, one thing happened is that I did disconnect and reconnect this connector. So reseating the connector may have been enough to get this thing functional. So let's uh, go and display test here. Oh, look at that. So it actually looks to be in great shape, except for one digit missing. So I think it was just a little bit dirty contacts. Um, so what I'll do is reflow the headers on that guy and replace the component. Actually, I'll reflow the headers first. Oh, you know what it is? That usually is the reason why a whole number is missing is uh a resistor there's like a r1 r3 r5 7 and 9 i think somewhere on here and each one represents a digit it's a little bit different orientation than the bally one so just uh i'm not seeing it at the moment but most likely it is i'm gonna say r5 just kind of guessing. No, seven. R one three five seven nine eleven. Maybe. I'm just kind of uh, guesstimating here. So uh, let's see what happens. 
I'll uh, show you this guy on the bench. Okay, so I reflowed all the headers, popped it back in, did not bring my digit back to life. I measured those resistors are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And they are all measuring proper at 100k ohms. So then I went and checked my go-to Bally display repair guide. And this is a great site if you ever need. It's steveculpa.net. That should get you where you need to be. This is um, all the information about repairing Bally displays. So if you're missing a full digit and it's not one of those resistors, it could be Q4 and Q10 level shifter and digit drivers. And that's what they are supposed to be. So I thought I would try a display that I had in my goodie bag over here. I have a few untested displays. And they look like, well, that one's Bally. Bally. Uh, there was one Stern, that's a Bally. I swear I saw one Stern one in here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I should really test all those out, but I popped one in and voila, this one works. And the good thing about this is that the last digit here is starting to um, go a little funky, but that doesn't matter because I only need the middle two digits. So it's a perfect candidate for this location here. So I'm going to put all that back together again and then check on the first thing I do is check the end of stroke switch really thoroughly on this upper flipper because I am suspecting that might be the issue. Okay, for the first time ever since I've had this machine, that display is fully functional now. I also reflowed this display because it was occasionally being just a little bit flaky. All right, so I got the play field up for flipper fixation, the fixing of the flipper. So got it in game mode and this flipper works and this one does not. I went about this quite the long way around and um, I could have cut to the chase if I was smarter, but this is pinball shenanigans, so what do you expect? Okay, I'm going to put my forearm on the flipper button, and I'm going to hold this end of stroke switch uh, closed a little bit, and voila. So, this happens occasionally where you clean the end of stroke switch, and by doing so, you just adjust it ever so slightly that it is not making good contact. So in the end, that's all that was. Um, probably the same thing for this flipper, but I'm going to do one flipper at a time. Um, so I'm going to need five hands to do this. So I'd need to press in this test button, hold the end of stroke switch closed and hit the cabinet button at the same time. I don't even think I can do that uh, without the camera in my hand, so I will have to figure that out, but we're making progress. Okay, so upper flipper. It's now happy and snappy. And uh, while I was in here, I did redo this connection here to the out hole switch because I noticed it was a little flaky and I also redid these wires to the test switch because it was also being a little bit flaky. You kind of got to push in the test button a little bit hard 
So I could, in theory, replace this whole switch too, but how often do you really use that, you know? It's just a test switch for the flippers. So I'm going to borrow my fourth hand here, like so, the old tripod, and I'll show you what I discovered. Hopefully you can see this, but uh, I need to... Let's see, I'm gonna hold the end of stroke switch closed right around here, it's hard for me to see. Then I'm gonna hold the test button down. Then with my knee, I'm gonna flip. And you keep a look right here to see if the flipper works, okay? So, hold switch, close that up a bit, hold that down, and here we go. Voila. So, again, just a poor job of cleaning and adjusting the end of stroke switch when I went and did all six of them. So, the grand scheme and lesson for today is just replace them all. That is really the ideal thing to do. And my goal was really just to kind of get the thing, all the flippers flipping and snappy and just make sure they were all okay before I went ahead and refurbish these guys because I still have to change the sleeves and uh, whatever I would deem necessary. I'm not sure to what extent I'm going to rebuild these guys, but I've got stuff to do. But now, at least I have full functionality, so I'm going to do a better job of cleaning and adjusting that, and then we should be back up and running Okay, it's flipper rebuilding time, and the first order of business is this flipper bracket. The coil stop screws were wood screws. That usually means the threads are roached. So what I actually did was go back to the well, which is the spare upper play field, and I pulled out uh, the bracket that was in there, tested the threads out for the coil stop, they are good, to realize this was the wrong side. So I pulled out the other one. Here's all the shrapnel that came from that. Broken uh, bushing and gnarled spring completely roached out coil stop and some pretty beat up plungers too. This coil was replaced at one point, but I think this is a good coil so I will keep that. And then look at this nylon portion there is pretty toasty. And this one is actually pretty good shape all things considered but what I've decided is that I think I'm going to try and do the flipper rebuild where I revert back to the older non-linear style and I'll show that in a bit but here is the old bracket with the nasty threads here I could have just re-threaded those to a bigger screw and put in bigger screws, but I thought I would clean this guy up. There is the good threads, and I'm going to pop this guy in there. In order to revert back to the um, old uh, flipper rebuild kit, you do have to remove this Nia liner here which was fortunately already broken out of this guy. It was worn right off, so I don't need to remove it. It was already removed. So we'll stick this guy up here. I might have to beef up my um, couple of my screw holes there. Some uh, bamboo skewers. But that is the beginning of the main playfield flipper rebuild. Okay, so this is basically what the flipper mech would look like using the older style 
rebuild kit. All right, so you got, uh, let me go back up here. This is the kit right here from Pinball Resource. So instead of using the parts that I'm using, I was going to attempt to do this. Well, it turns out I don't have the cranks in my kit. I have a KT B Flip 03M, which is a little bit different and doesn't include the cranks. So I decided to go linear after all. So here's all of my crap. Then I ran into my next snag, the new crank which is fine and dandy, except um, see how the set screw sticks out quite a bit? The Allen screw, well, first of all, here's the other one. Uh, it's like, broken, so I'm missing one. So that's kind of poopy. And secondly, I can't put the second set screw in this hole because it interferes with the end of stroke switch. And I can't put it in this hole because it interferes with the nylon bushing. So I tried to grab a set screw from the old one, like so, but it is a different size. Fortunately, a couple years ago, I decided to buy me a couple extra cranks. And this style here has the set screws that go in and they're innies, not outies. So thankfully, I have these. Otherwise, I'm not sure what I would have done just yet, but uh, that is going to be the solution. So, where is this the right side? Yeah. So now, I can proceed. So, Hopefully I can finish these two guys before I wrap things up. Okay, I have been working on this for uh, kind of a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, so this guy's kind of <clears throat> roughed in here. I ended up changing the bushing to the one in the uh, rebuild kit. Got the new nye liner, new plunger, new crank, new sleeve, new stop. Uh, new used entire bracket of course and I really cleaned up the flipper bat and it is just kind of snugged into place I have the end of stroke switch out of the equation because it, it's a little bit hard to access the set screws so until my flippers are aligned and tightened I won't be putting back the uh, end of stroke switches so same kind of exact thing went on with the left side the bracket was stripped here these two holes so i replaced the whole bracket new nylon liner, new bushing cleaned everything up beefed up all four holes with toothpick and wood glue same as the other side and that is where i am at these are some of my parts that I'm going through. Obviously, I'll put these back in my spare crank bag. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these end of stroke switches or not. We'll see about that, I'll deal with that later. Definitely running out of steam, so I don't even wanna think about end of stroke switches right now. And then, this is some of the old crap that is no longer any good. Oh, and look at this. This flipper bracket has some pretty rusty parts on it. These two pieces, for whatever reason, are rusty. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much the junk pile. These are the screws I pulled out of. Uh, this is it here, I think. So someone actually looks like they might have retapped these holes with the bigger screws, which is what I do sometimes, so I'll save these screws. I'll save the brackets even, because um, you can actually reverse these. You can take all these parts, 
put it on here, take all these parts and put it on here, and then you're using brand new fresh holes on everything, except you do have to tap every one of the holes that are not in use. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, you gotta do all those, um, but it ain't so bad if you use a drill. So I'm gonna try and kind of rough in the last, the left flipper, like the right one. Just get it to this point and then I must take a break. So we'll see if I can pull that off and it will be a good checkpoint for me. All right, there we go. Everything's roughed in. Feeling pretty good. So just got to come back tomorrow, align and tighten my flippers, install and adjust at the end of stroke switches and then uh, should be able to uh, do some playing. Uh, I probably will have to, at some point, deal with the other four flippers too, but uh, just focusing on these ones that are kind of the most beat up and the most utilized. So those are getting the full treatment. And yeah, so that's enough uh, dealing with flippers for me tonight. I can see why I was procrastinating now and working on displays and warped plastic play fields, um, but darn near the finish line on these guys, so that's good. All right, I'm out of here, so we'll see you guys next time.